Is Lily for the long haul or a two week wonder a la Obnix? Yeah, Pantomime Horse, to be honest, I think this is a, this is a thing we can talk about for 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to try really hard not to do that, like not to stun lock on this question, but it's something I've been asking myself for a while. Um, not only Liliana, but Sheldred, right? Is this is this the same thing as Obnix? Is this the same thing as Giruda? Am I dating myself here? But when Ikoria came out, it's like, you know, we had Arena for a week before the set came out, and in that week, everyone was like, Garuda needs to be banned, dude. This card's ridiculous. It turns out it's not actually very good at all. We can play around it. It costs six mana. You know. um, I think... I'm going to get stun locked on it. I really don't want to. I think, uh, as I've said before, that I think we're in the kind of standard that can beat Liliana. What I'm beginning to fear, however, is that even though we can beat Liliana, the ways of doing it are really narrow. Um, haste creatures, you know. That's why I think that's one of the reasons that we see we still see a lot of aggro in the early days of a format. Traditionally, the first two weeks, aggro tends to be very strong. Fastest deck wins, while the mid range decks and the combo decks and the control decks are all still trying to figure out how to optimally use their slots. You know, like a control deck. If it doesn't know what removal spells it's supposed to be playing and in, in what quantities and all that, then like it's hard for a control deck to do well in a format. So the format needs to develop to inform those decks of what to do. And this actually trickles down. I hate to use that term because usually trickle down does not work. But that, that, that idea, you know, uh, also is true for mid-range decks that have to figure out, you know, well... We have to be in a pocket. We have to be in a pocket where, you know, we, we have the late game value engines that beat control. But we also have to get to the late game to institute those value engines to beat aggro. Right. Um, and it takes, you know, that, that's a delicate balance. You have to take a couple of weeks to figure out uh, what you're even responding to. Con combo decks, same way, right? You know, combo decks have to figure out what defensive pieces do we have to play? Uh, how much do they have to cost? <laughs> you know, all that stuff. What threats are we even combating um, in order to reliably get our combo in place. Aggro decks don't have that problem. Aggro decks are just like, play guys and turn them sideways and they kill you. Like, four turns. Um, so aggro decks tend to be really strong in the beginning of the format. I think that we might be seeing a format right now where that is sustained for a little while longer than it normally is. Uh, it all depends on when the tournament results start rolling in and how reliable they are. I think we need more, like a bigger data set. We need another week before we really start... Before I think Arena makes any drastic shifts... Because the first week or two of this format, mono black, really, really important. I'm serious when I say it's 30% of the matches I play. Um, more realistically, it's 25, but that's still a huge share of the meta if, if that's true for other people. So I think a great way of responding to a turn three Liliana, even if you're on the draw, is aggro right now, especially because mono red has... Thundering Raiju, if you're on the play against Liliana, you can just go and drop Raiju, it's fine. You have Bloodthirsty Adversary, you have Phoenix Chick, you have Kimano Faces Kakazan, which creates a haste guy. Um, usually the turn after Liliana comes out, it's very convenient, isn't it? Um, in, in Gruul, you have, you have a Maya Iconoclast. Uh, in Mono Green and Gruul, you have a Ulvenwald Oddity. Uh, there are lots of haste creatures in the format right now. Um, that are just really, really, really good against Liliana in most situations, right? Um, those same red-based aggro decks also play uh, play with fire. They play um, lightning strike, and those are again very good against planeswalkers. And planeswalkers, not just Liliana, but planeswalkers in general, tend to be looking pretty good right now. One of the reasons I think Shieldred looks so good is that a lot of the aggro decks seeing play are red-based aggro decks that don't have a reliable way of removing Shieldred. Um, like I said, that's why I'm playing like a two of Rending Flame in my Mono Red Aggro deck right now. Is specifically to kill Shieldred. This card's everywhere. Um, but against Shieldred, I don't think is that good. Shieldred, uh, not to sound some kind of way, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Shieldred doesn't create any sort of immediate value when she enters the battlefield. She doesn't leave behind any value when she dies. Um, she's not particularly well statted. I mean, a four mana four five is fine, but it's just fine. It's just fine. That's all it is. It's just it's only fine. Um, it's not inherently powerful. Um, so I do think we're in the kind of format where 
Mono Black has kind of a stranglehold on the early days. So we're playing a lot of Mono Black. Meat Hook Masker is still a powerful card. Shieldred is a powerful card. Shieldred also plays well with Meat Hook Masker because usually you don't have to hook for five. You know, you hook for three, you hook for four. Your Shieldred stays alive, your opponent's entire team dies. Uh, and that's just a really good play, you know? <laughs> but I think, like, once we figure out how to beat Mono Black or once Mono Black just isn't as in vogue anymore, but I think that will come with Mono Black, you know, us, us figuring out. Again, we get a bigger data set for tournament results and us figuring out how to beat Mono Black. Um, which I don't think is actually that hard. I really don't think it's hard to game against Mono Black. You know exactly what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Um, so once we get that figured out, I think that Mono Black will drop off a little bit in playability. I think you're still going to have people, especially on Arena, who are in love with their Mono Black deck and they spend like eight Mythic Wild Cards on it. You know, they're going to play it. Um, but I, st I still think it'll drop off some in playability. And with that, hopefully, the aggro decks will drop off as well. Because I imagine as Mono Black goes, you know, if, it, if, if Mono Black stays in the format, then so do these really fast aggro decks. You know, if mid-range just cannot compete with a turn three Liliana, you know, like, I'm going to play the best two drop in the format. No creatures before that. Or I'm going to play the best three drop in the format. No creatures before that. Then Liliana is just going to tear you apart. So mid-range has to figure out this sort of puzzle of like, how do I beat Liliana and Aggro at the same time? And I'm pretty sure it's easy. We, you know, it's just, we have to diagnose like exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> and I think that the mid-range deck that figures out how to do it will probably be a Liliana deck. It doesn't have to be mono black. You know, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a Liliana deck for that matter. But... Mono Black just has so much going for it right now, and you can build it a lot of different ways. Personally, I think the best Mono Black build right now is not the one that you've been seeing. I think that it's um, closer to this right here. Um, sometimes you'll see five drops like uh, Junji in this deck, uh, and even higher than that. I don't think Fell Stinger actually belongs in this deck, but this is just this is the softest slot in the deck. I also think you could duck at least one copy of Graph Reaver and be fine if you wanted to play more removal or something like that. But this is basically a hybrid version of the mid-range deck we've been seeing and an aggro deck. This deck is to play Colt Conscripts on turn one and Tenacious Underdog on turn two. So against ag you know control opponents and whatnot, even mid-range opponents, if you're on the play, you're pressuring their life total like from the opening bell. You know, like you're immediately in there with the clothesline, putting them on the mat. What are they going to do? They can't even catch their breath. You know what I mean? So if you land. You know, by the way, notice what I'm not playing in this deck. Notice what is very conspicuous by her absence in this deck. But I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it in this particular deck. But I am still playing Shieldred. I am still playing Invoke Despair. Um, <clears throat> so what this deck can do is it can do a bunch of damage to your opponent in the early game. Again, Conscripts and Underdog, 5 power on you know turn 2 before your opponents play their second land. You're going to be dealing some damage. They can't effectively remove these creatures, you know what I mean? Um, and then on turn three, you get like Graveyard Trespasser, or you can Fell Stinger, Sack your Colt Conscript, refill. It's a decent play. Next turn, you get another Fat Death Touch creature, which will then begin, this is, I think, part of the secret, which will then begin to act as reach for your aggro deck. Not reach the keyword ability, but reach like the concept, right? Like, I've done X amount of damage in my aggro deck in the first three turns of the game. Now my opponent is stabilized, they played a big creature that I can't attack through, or they've killed my guys, or whatever, right? So I need to deal the last six or eight points of damage. How do I do that? Shieldred can help you do that, and Invoke Despair can help you do that. The cards at the top of your curve can help you do that. And I think that that is actually... Oh, by the way, Fell Stinger can kind of subtly help you do that, too. Um, you can Fell Stinger, target them with it, and that's a shock. If you have a Shieldred out, you're sixing them. Which is good. Like that can just end a game. That's the only reason Fell Stinger's in the deck. Um, also, Shieldred with Invoke Despair. If you haven't experienced this yet, is <laughs> you don't get to deal extra damage to your opponent uh, with Invoke Despair, but you gain you do gain a ton of life most of the time. And obviously, you're doing an average of four damage to your opponent with the Despair. So, I really like this deck compared to the Mono Black Aggro deck that we've been seeing. That's kind of slow to get started. You know, um, this one gets on board like hella fast. And when your opponent's done dealing with that, now they have to deal with the extra damage from Graveyard Trespasser and extra damage from Children. It's just, this one's been a good, good build for me. If you haven't tried like a more 
aggro-y version of the deck. Um, but I, I did, in fact, get stunlocked. I said that I wouldn't. <laughs> I said that I wouldn't. But Mono Black, uh, how to beat it, what the format looks like because of it, all that is just a really, I think, the most interesting concept, like the most interesting um, topic in standard magic right now. It's what's on everyone's mind. 